Good morning, church. Happy Education Sunday. I want to thank our pastors for giving me this time and platform and opportunity to share with you what God has put in my heart. When I was in 10th grade, I had what we can call an educational slump. Normally an A student, I suddenly found myself unmotivated in school, forgetting homework assignments, and dipping into the 70s in some of my core classes like math and English. What happened? I don't know, but I do know that the grades I was producing and the attitude with which I approached my schoolwork were not reflective of who I was in Christ. If I am a Christian, then everything I do should be a reflection of who I am in Christ. The Bible teaches that God created man and said that he was good. So then why were my grades bad? But for whatever reason, let's just say by the grace of God, I felt a heavy conviction on my heart for performing so poorly in school. I didn't feel that I was just letting my parents down or my whole family down. No, I felt as if I was letting God down. Can I pause for a moment and say, it's nice to do things because you want to make your parents and family happy. It's nice to go the extra mile because you want to make your pastors proud. But can I tell you, that the number one reason that we should pursue excellence in all that we do is to honor the Lord God who created us. I was not honoring God with my education and something needed to change. I needed help. I knew that on my own, I could not make the changes or make the extra effort to do better in school. So what could I do? The only thing I could do was turn to Christ to give me the grace and the strength to turn my grades and my attitude around. I remember at the start of my junior year in high school, at the end of an education-focused church service, much like this one, I went up to the altar and I gave my school year to the Lord and I prayed, Jesus, help me do better in school. And although the schoolwork didn't seem to get easier, I remember that my motivation and effort dramatically changed. I started to go into class with an attitude that honored Christ. I started to make grades that honored the image of God. At the end of my senior year, I wasn't the smartest guy in school and I didn't get any college scholarship offers, but I was proud to make the National Honor Society and graduate in the top 25% of my class. Could I have done that on my own? No way. The Bible says in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And when it came to my education, I could do all things because Christ strengthened me. Today on Education Sunday, I want to remind you that each of us has our own role in education. You may be a student trying to graduate or make it to the next grade. You may be a parent or guardian trying to help your child with his or her homework. You may even be a pastor or a church leader trying to help students wrestling with school problems. Whatever your role is, I want to tell you today, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We can with Christ. And I'll be honest with you, today, especially in 2020, we desperately need Christ to help us improve educational achievements for students in our churches and communities. Students who come from Hispanic and Black neighborhoods and communities often have the lowest college completion rates in our nation. Young men especially are less likely to obtain a bachelor's degree and most likely to leave college without any degree at all. Many times, when Hispanic and black students even get into college, they need to take remedial courses to make up for learning they missed or were never even taught in their high school. I still remember that ill feeling I had when I arrived at college, took an entrance exam, and found out I had to take an alternative math course because I did not score high enough to take college algebra. Stories like that, and worse, are normal occurrences for Hispanic and black students all over America. But those stories can change. Just like my educational journey changed when I believed I can with Christ, the educational journey for Hispanic and black students can change when churches and congregations all across America stand up and declare in unison, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We can with Christ. With Christ, we can help change the story for Hispanic and black children in our communities. With Christ, we can see more of our young students as leaders in society. 
as doctors in medicine, as trailblazers in the sciences, as reformers in government, and as innovators in business. We must believe we can with Christ. But we must also come alongside Christ and work to see these four things happen. With Christ, we need to believe and strive to see students become college and career ready. 10, 15, 20 years ago, we would be happy if young Latinos and Latinas walked across the stage at high school graduation and received their diploma. For many of our families, that was more than our parents or grandparents ever did. We celebrate that accomplishment. Today, however, we need to change the way we think and understand high school graduation is just the starting line. If you are a child of God, when you graduate from high school, your glory days are not behind you. They are in front of you. For God said through the prophet Joel, and afterward I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your old men will dream dreams, and your young men will see visions. If God grants visions to young men and women, it's because he wants you looking forward. To all the middle school and high school students, I say, don't view your education as something you will need to get through. Rather, see your education as a trampoline that will launch you into God's calling and purpose for your life. Use your time in school to set yourself up to get into the college of your dreams. Use your time in school to set yourself up to move into a successful career. Prepare yourself to do well on the SAT. Make time to research the right college for the career you want to go into. Find a mentor program that can pair you with someone who works in the field into which you want to go. High school graduation is just the starting line for you to ready, set, go into the college and career God has prepared for you. With Christ, we need to believe and strive to see students become college and career ready. And also, we need to believe and strive to see parents become learning heroes. There is a widely held myth in churches that it is the pastor's or youth pastor's job to teach your children about God. But we know that in Deuteronomy, in the Shema, Moses instructs the parents to impress the Lord's commandments on their children. And there is a widely held myth in society that education is the job of teachers in schools. You can believe that if you want, and maybe you do believe that, but I can surely guarantee you that parents who think that way probably do not have children who are on their way to becoming college and career ready when they leave high school. And let's say you are an engaged parent, that you are someone who knows the names of your child's teachers and what classes he or she has taken. According to research, there's a big difference between what parents understand about their child's learning progress versus how well their child is actually progressing. You may think that Brian or Becky is at a certain reading or math level because he or she has an A in class but in actuality, they are behind where they need to be. That's why it's important for parents to be learning heroes. Being a learning hero does not mean that you are an expert in science, history, or English, but it does mean that you understand how well your child is actually doing in class. It means that instead of asking if your child has a B or an A in algebra, you ask in what math areas your child is proficient or in what areas your child needs to grow. Most of society believes that education is the job of teachers, but I wanna challenge you, Christian parents and grandparents, to make education your job. I'm not saying you have to be a teacher, although some of you might feel like it during this season, but I am saying that you can take charge of your child's education by becoming your child's learning hero. With Christ, we need to believe and strive to see students become college and career ready. Parents become learning heroes. And we also need to believe and strive to see churches serve their local schools. I'm so proud to be a part of a church that has intentionally and prayerfully built long-term relationship with local schools so that every child, parent, and teacher experiences Jesus' love in a tangible way. A few years ago, our congregation donated a washer and dryer to a nearby school so low-income students could wash their clothes during gym. We've hosted back-to-school rallies where students could receive free school supplies, clothes, and a new haircut. And during special holidays, our church gives a special invitation 
to the families of nearby schools to be first in line for Christmas giveaways and meals. Every kind of challenge is present in our local schools. Hunger, homelessness, human trafficking, refugees, mental and physical health challenges. Partnering with local schools allows the church to come alongside the community and address every single one of these challenges for the glory of God. Christians should be out in the community, beyond the four walls of the church, loving our neighbors as God loves us. And when we invest in partnering with schools, we invest in children. And when we invest in children, we create the greatest potential for long-term transformation in our Hispanic and Black communities. Each church cannot address every challenge, but every church can do something to help. By partnering with local schools, the church can transform our communities for generations. With Christ, we need to believe and strive to see students become college and career ready. Parents become learning heroes. Churches serve the local schools. And finally, we need to believe and strive to see states and schools provide a high quality education. In some zip codes, the average student who graduates from public school gets a 1200 on her SAT and is ready for college. And in another zip code, the average student who graduates from public school gets a 900 on her SAT and has to take remedial courses in college. This should not be the case. Every school district, regardless of a student's zip code, ethnicity, or family income, should be preparing students for college or a career after high school. In the U.S., we estimate that 10% of U.S. public school students are classified as English learners. Of these students, the vast majority are of Hispanic or Spanish-speaking descent. What can happen, and what does happen in many schools, is that because a student has trouble with English, the school holds that student to a lower learning standard. Instead of placing Jacob in a class with more proficient English speakers or in a class with a more rigorous curriculum, they keep Jacob with other students who struggle with English and keep Jacob away from college level courses during high school. Maybe the school thinks they're doing the Jacob a service, but in actuality, they're making it more difficult for him to be college ready. Research from Rice University tells us that if schools were to expose Jacob to high college-ready standards, that Jacob would be more likely to enroll in a four-year college. That is what it means for states and schools to provide a high-quality education for all students. So how can states and schools provide a high-quality education? By parents, pastors, and community leaders ensuring that they do. It is important that groups such as the Faith and Education Coalition of the NHCLC and concerned parents and pastors stay engaged in America's education systems and stand ready to demand that states and schools grant all students access to a high quality education. Nearly 20 years ago, at the altar of a spirit-filled church in San Antonio, Texas, I gave my school year to the Lord and I prayed to Jesus to help me do better in school. A few years later, when I was 22 years old, I received my bachelor's degree. When I turned 25, I was named honor graduate for my class in expeditionary skills and training in the Navy. When I was 27, I earned my master's degree from Southwestern Assemblies of God University. And today, I am a PhD candidate at Dallas Baptist University. And it's not because I can, it's because I can with Christ. This Education Sunday, I'm asking you four questions. Can students become college and career ready? Can parents become learning heroes? Can churches serve the local schools? And can schools provide a high quality education to all students? I say we can with Christ. The blind man could see because of Jesus. The lame man could run because of Christ. The dead man could live because of Jesus. And when it comes to achieving an education, I know that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If this message spoke to you, I want to encourage you to visit faithandeducation.com. Click on join and register for our monthly newsletter. Through our newsletter, you will receive information on scholarships, resources from universities who are a part of the Alliance for Hispanic Education, and details of upcoming educational initiatives and events. Pastors, 
parents, and church leaders. On behalf of the Faith and Education Coalition, on behalf of the National Hispanic Christian Leadership Conference and Dallas Baptist University, thank you for your time and thank you for all you do in the ministry of advancing Hispanic student achievement.